Suppose we have a solution and in that solution we have some type of polypeptide and the polypeptide exists in its fully functional three-dimensional tertiary state. Now if we increase the temperature of our solution or if we add some type of denaturing chemical agent, what will begin to happen is that protein will begin to unfold. It will begin to lose its tertiary structure followed by the secondary structure and eventually it will denature and form a non-functional biologically inactive protein. Now at the same time, if we remove that denaturing chemical agent or if we decrease the temperature back to normal, what will happen is that denatured form of the polypeptide will basically begin to refold and eventually will fold into the fully active native state of that protein. Now we know that this happens because it's the primary structure, it's that specific sequence of amino acids in that polypeptide that actually determines what that final three-dimensional structure of that protein actually is. So the protein easily is able to go from that non-functional denatured state to the fully functional native state because it's the primary structure that determines the tertiary structure of that protein. Now the question we want to focus on in this lecture is how exactly does the folding or unfolding process actually take place? How exactly does the protein unfold from the native state into that denatured state or how does the protein fold from a denatured state into that fully functional three-dimensional state? So let's begin by taking a look at the following graph. What the graph basically describes is the percentage of the proteins that are denatured versus the conditions that the protein is actually under. So as we go from left to right along the x-axis, we either increase our temperature of the solution or we increase the amount of chemical denaturing agent that is found within that mixture. So when no chemical agents are found in the solution and the temperature is normal, 0% of the proteins are denatured and all the proteins essentially exist in their fully functional three-dimensional folded native state. Now as we begin to increase our temperature or as we begin to increase the amount of chemical agent, what begins to happen? Well, initially, nothing really happens. A small amount of the protein begins to unfold. But as we approach this section, we see a sharp increase in the percentage of the protein that have denatured. Eventually, we basically reach this point where all the protein exists in their fully unfolded denatured state. So the curve that we get is a sigmoidal curve. So we have a sharp transition from the folded to the unfolded. And we can also look at the graph going the other way. So as we decrease the temperature, as we return it back to normal, or we remove those chemical agents, we see a sharp transition from the denatured to that fully folded active state of that protein. The question is, why exactly does this actually happen? Well, it happens because of the cooperative nature of protein folding and unfolding. So what do we mean by protein folding cooperativity? Well, let's suppose we're going from this state to this state. So we essentially bump up our temperature and once we increase our temperature, what begins to happen is a certain segment of that protein begins to become unstable and some of those bonds holding that segment together begin to break. Now as that segment, as that localized region on that protein becomes unstable because it is connected to other segments of that protein, it disrupts these interactions with the other segments and that causes those other segments to basically break down as well. So we have one segment breaking down causes, let's say a second segment to also break down. And that second, a second segment by breaking down causes a third segment in close proximity to also break down. And so these different segments of the protein structure, as they begin to break down, they cooperate with one another to basically unfold 
that entire protein structure. And so eventually, because of this cooperative nature, we have this really sharp rise in the amount of protein that are denatured. Likewise, we can also look at it in the other way. Let's suppose we're going from this to this state. So we decrease the temperature of our solution. So as we decrease the temperature, a certain segment of that protein in its denatured state becomes to stabilize. And because of that, it begins to interact with some segment. And as those segments interact, they stimulate other segments to stabilize themselves and to interact. And so eventually this cooperativity of these different segments in the protein cause the folding process to basically take place quickly as shown by the following sharp rise in our curve. So the curve describes how most proteins in our body fold or unfold and notice that the curve shows that the majority of proteins transition sharply from the unfolded to the unfolded state and vice versa. And this is because of the cooperative nature of proteins. So proteins fold and unfold cooperatively. So let's take a look at the following diagram to see exactly what we mean. And actually this diagram also tells us something else. So let's begin in our native state. So we begin essentially in this condition when all the proteins exist in their native state. Now, as we begin to increase the temperature of our solution, that begins to destabilize some section of that particular uh, protein molecule. So let's suppose initially we begin to destabilize all these bonds found in here. So remember, this is the tertiary structure of our protein. And in the tertiary structure, we have these amino acids that are found far away from one another in that polypeptide that are interacting. So we have a bunch of these secondary structures. We have these alpha uh, we have these alpha helixes, and we have the beta pleated sheets. And so the amino acids found on this beta pleated sheet interact with the amino acids found on this beta pleated sheet. And so these bonds are part of the tertiary structure of our polypeptide. So let's suppose for argument's sake that initially by increasing the temperature, we, we destabilize this segment of our DNA. So initially we, we, uh, we begin to break down these bonds, these non-covalent interactions so that eventually we go from the native state to intermediate state A, where all these bonds are essentially broken down. Now in the process, by breaking down these bonds here, we change the shape of our molecule and we cause other bonds to begin to break as well. So other segments of that protein molecule begin to break down as well. So for example, these bonds here are, are affected and so they break down as well. And so these bonds begin to break down. So in this particular case, we begin to break down our tertiary state. And so these are our secondary states as shown in the following diagram. So the secondary structures. So this is intermediate state A. So we continue to increase our temperature and as we continually destabilize the different segments of our protein, those segments in turn destabilize other segments. So as these move apart, these begin to move apart. And so these interactions begin to break, these interactions begin to break. And so eventually we form intermediate state B in which all these bonds between these beta sheets and these beta sheets eventually break. And the bonds between the beta sheets and these alpha helixes break as well. And so intermediate state B describes only the secondary structures involved. So we have these four beta pleated sheets and these three alpha helices. Now, eventually, as we continually increase our temperature, the hydrogen bonds that hold all these secondary structures will also break. And so these different secondary structures will, uh, will eventually break down denature until we form a single long polypeptide in its linear state. So now we only have the primary structure. And so notice, as we go from the native state to our denatured state, 
right? These interactions take place cooperatively. And not only that, but we also go through these intermediate states. And so what that means is during the folding or unfolding process, going this way is unfolding, going this way in reverse is folding, during either process, proteins follow a partly defined pathway that consists of these intermediate states. And so what we see in this particular case, we have two intermediate states, but we can also have five intermediate states, 10 intermediate states, and so forth. And what these intermediate states basically describe is, it is that is they describe uh, energy states. So what that means is when a protein folds or unfolds, it doesn't actually find it doesn't actually follow a precisely defined pathway, but it follows a partly defined pathway. And what that means is when the protein, let's say, unfolds, it goes from a very stable native state into a less stable state that has its own energy into a higher energy state. So this is even less stable than this. And finally into this final state that is less stable than either one of these states and so when the protein either folds or unfolds it does so cooperatively and that's why we have the sigmoidal curve and not only that but it has to pass through these intermediate structures to actually get to that final structure. So when we go between these two structures, the native state, the three dimensional functional state and our denatured state, that protein must actually follow these different intermediate structures. Now, an important point must be emphasized. So let's suppose we take the protein and we denature it once. So the first time around, it goes through this specific structure A, this specific structure B, and then it ends up in its denatured state. Now, let's suppose we reform this same native protein and now we denature it once again. So the second time around, that protein will not go through a molecule that looks exactly like B and it will not go through a molecule that looks exactly like A. But what it will follow is a pathway that is similar in energy. So the second time around, when this, when this same protein will denature, it will create an intermediate A that resembles this molecule in terms of its energy. And then, we'll, and then it will find this state that also resembles this in terms of its energy value. So what that means is when a protein folds or unfolds, it follows a partly, a partially defined pathway. So the pathway isn't exactly defined. It's not the same every time, but it's partially the same in the sense that the protein has to go through these different energy values to get from this low energy thermodynamically stable state to the higher energy thermodynamically unstable state.